To adjust the image settings, go ahead and select the picture first and then come up here and click on its related contextual format tab. And there you go, the adjust group. Let's see, let's do corrections first. And you can see that it will improve the brightness, contrast, or sharpness of the picture. Click on it. First of all, you want to sharpen or soften. Now when you have two pixels of different colors, if you want to soften it, like soften 50%, you can see a preview of it over in the document there. And it's blurry as opposed to sharpen 50%. Ooh, he's got pointy sharp teeth. Let's go down to brightness and contrast. So you can see the brightness is plus 20% and the contrast is not as contrasting as opposed to going to something that's more contrasting when it comes to two pixels of different colors. And it stands out and doesn't look as blurry and as bleached. Of course, the brightness will do that as well. In any case, if you want more options, click on Picture Correction Options, opens up the task pane, and you can go ahead and you got the same presets if you want to mess with it in there. You can also change the brightness and the contrast, click and drag, or you can do it numerically. And also you can mess with the crop that we learned in the previous training video. Instead of doing it by hand, by using the crop button, you can do it numerically down below by going down. And you see how it's cropping off its nose for the width. Ow! Let's go ahead and click on reset the picture. And of course, if we want to reset the crop, we have to come back up here in the adjust group. Click on the reset and go to reset picture and size so it can go back to its original size and not just reset the format. Let me go ahead and close out of the format picture task pane and come back up here. Let's talk about Couleur. Click on it. You got color saturations, color tones. Let me take a look at this over here. Ooh, temperature. We're getting hot. Ow! Let's go ahead and click on it and go with that. Oh, that's nice. And then come back up here, click on color. See, recolor, blue accent color, one light, more variations if you want to choose a specific color. If you've got a single color and you want to make it transparent, go ahead and click on this feature. You get this little pencil with the eraser there that wherever you click, it'll choose a single color and erase all of the adjacent pixels of the same color. So this looks like the same color. This one kind of gets, well, not the exact same color. You could try it, click on it, and you see, got rid of, looks like a little bit, if that. Let's try it again. Color, set transparent, and choose a solid color out here. Click on it, there you go. So it works with solid colors, fabu. And then we got something that's very artistic-y. Click on that, effects, and well, you got the pencil grayscale. You can go ahead and print that off and say, hey man, I just in my spare time, I totally sketched a dragon, dude. In any case, you got quite a few of those, and oh, that's really fancy. Oh, I like that. Ooh, let's choose that one. Glowing edges. Click on it. Although fun, that's very distracting to the eye, so let me go ahead and I change my mind. Hit undo. Or you can go ahead and click on the reset picture. And if I do size, well, I haven't messed with the size, so I can just go ahead and reset the picture, which discards all the formatting. We're back to where we started. And let's go ahead, speaking of artistic effects, you do have some picture styles. We'll come back to the group in just a minute, but if you want to give it a metal frame, cool. Of course, you can click on the More button and choose something else. Let me click off. You can give it a border, picture border, choose a color. It gives you kind of a thin color for the blue accent one, darker 25%. If you want something that's thicker, then choose your weight, and it gets thicker. Then, of course, after you choose the thickness, you can come back and choose the color. Let me click off. Picture effects, maybe you want something glowing, glowing, warm glow around the border. Eight point red accent color two. Looks like he spit fire around the border here. Let me go ahead and reset it. And let's come over here in the adjust group and let's remove the background. Now the background that I'm looking at to remove is, well, this blotchy orange stuff. So go ahead and click on it. Because we couldn't do it with the transparent feature because it only chooses a single color. Although this works along the same lines, this gives us a little bit more flexibility. So first off, you can see that we've got a box around the dragon, and it's got its nose cut off, so that won't be included unless I hover over the right middle resizing handle and click and drag to get his nose in there. Oh good. And we need his tail, of course. There we go. And then to go ahead and get rid of this orangey, flamey stuff here, as it were, let's come up here on the Related Background Removal tab. And you can mark areas to keep if it gets removed, 
or mark areas you want to remove. So go ahead and click on that and you get a little pencil that you can go ahead and click and drag the areas you want removed. Ooh, cool. Let's go ahead and do it in here and see if we can get it there. I have to be careful that I don't select one of his spines there because if that gets in there, it'll pull that into the color mix and may get rid of half of his uh, spine. Click and drag here. Large swaths. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, that's great. Okay. Wow. But that looks really good. And then if you want to go ahead and keep it, click on Keep Changes. But before I do that, if you want to delete one of these marks here, so these marked areas for removal have a minus sign as opposed to mark areas to keep when you click on that and say, no, nah, I want to keep this. And then it opens it up and it keeps part of it wherever you move the line. So if you want to keep this part, well, it depends on where you click and drag. That's where it's going to go. But if I want to get rid of it, either what I choose to keep or what I mark to remove, then come up here and click on delete mark and go ahead and click on the mark and it gets rid of it and it's still up there so if I click on another mark got rid of it didn't open it back up because I guess this mark is holding everything here from being revealed so if I get rid of that oh yeah yeah see that did it okay let's go ahead and mark it to remove it click and drag there we go I can of course go ahead and discard all changes Ugh. or I can go ahead and hit undo and it actually went back remove background to having everything back to it so we can keep changes and well there you go click off of it and you're like wow that blends well if it wasn't for the fact that the text was way above his head and you could click here and see the picture then you wouldn't know that there was some workings on there or that it came actually like this so you can go ahead and, and of course crop it let me go ahead and click on reset the formatting we're back to where we started and then up in the adjust group you've got the compression so when you have a lot of pictures in your document, the document file size becomes pretty huge. And so if you want to go ahead and decrease that so it doesn't take as long to download or to email off to somebody, click on Compress Pictures. And first off, these boxes, the compression options, are checked by default to apply only to this picture. So if you uncheck it, if you have more than one picture, it'll apply to all the pictures throughout the entire document. So it will compress all of them. Right now, we'll just compress this one. And then we remember in the previous training video on cropping our images, how when we cropped it, and then we're like, oh, I made a mistake. So we go back to click on crop, and it showed the areas that were cut out, but still there. So you can go ahead and uncrop it, as it were. Well, to help save on space, it will delete the cropped areas of the picture. So if I cropped it down to his head, and this is checked, and I click okie dokie, and I'm like, oh, I didn't mean to do that. I can't reset the picture back to where it was because it deleted the cropped area of the picture. So keep that in mind. And then down below, the pixels per inch. The smaller, the less sharper it's going to be. So if you want to save space, then use something smaller. If you just want them to get the gist of the picture as opposed to something that you want sharper, then go ahead and select something a little bit higher. And then when you're done, go ahead and click Okie Dokie and it compresses it and it makes the size of the file a little bit smaller than it previously was. And then back up here in the adjust group, if you want to swap your picture out, you can see where it says change picture, remove or replace the selected picture. So if you're like, I don't want this here, and you don't want to select it, hit the delete key, then put the cursor back in here, you just want to do a straight swap, then you can click on that button or you can right click on the image and go down to change picture, online from a file, we'll go to pictures, sample pictures and even those pictures like super huge because it's going to be replacing the image I have there it's going to keep it well at that same size so when I double click there you go that's very nice thanks for watching hey as a quick reminder if you like my video please give it a thumbs up you can also click on me and subscribe to my channel get notified of the latest videos and for only two dollars a month you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos